welcomed, stranger, to my abode. Stranger? Don't you remember me? You invited me here. Every moment we meet, and every moment we part, you are both stranger and friend, April Ryan. I'm sorry, but could you try to be a little less obtuse this time? I have a hard time understanding half of what you say. I will beg for your forgiveness, April Ryan. I had a hard time to make myself understood amongst other peoples. I will pull myself into this moment, difficult as it may be, so that we can communicate and so that you may understand. It is important that you understand, April Ryan, very important. Who are you? I am Abnaxus of the Venar, ambassador to the Ired Council in Mercuria. My people live far from here, and they do rarely visit your kind, and so I am their sole link to humans and Dolmari. Why is that? I alone among the Venar am able to focus on a particular moment and thread in time, and so to speak with those who flow with time, like you. How do your people perceive time? It is hard to explain any moment before this moment and any moment after is the same to me as this one. I have lived already and I am yet to live. Do you understand me? I think so, but how is that possible? Everything is possible, April Ryan. There is magic, and there is science, and between the two, everything is possible. Can you see the future? To me, every moment is the same. There is no future. I can relate moments you have yet to see, and I can unravel possible threads. But remember, the future I see may not be the one into which you walk. Moments and threads fluctuate, change. I can remember things that have never come to pass, and I have seen things that will never be. So you can't tell the future? I would see your possible futures, the likely threads among hundreds. If there was not a veil in time, I would. What's this veil you keep talking about? Somewhere ahead, in our path, there is a dark veil through which I cannot pass, past which I cannot see. It is disconcerting to me to be blocked from the moments of my life. How did this veil come to be? It was, no, will be, created in chaos, by chaos, to keep the future hidden. All threads converge on a single point here, beyond the veil, and this will happen only once it is written. Written? Where? In the prophecies. Tell me about the prophecies. Words have been written by seers who can discern from all possible threads the threads that are certain to be woven. These words are the prophecies. And what do the prophecies say? Prophecies speak of a time when the balance will falter, weakened by the assault of chaos and its servants. The moment the veil falls is the moment of uncertainty. The balance may stand, the balance may fall. I cannot tell which it will be, and I cannot even see the possibilities, the threads extending from each fork. But the prophecies also speak of a savior, as the prophecies usually do. One who will bring order to chaos, only to release chaos on the innocent. One who will restore the balance, only to finally break it. That doesn't sound like a savior. 
The word in my tongue is Kanang La. Literally translated, it means the small seed who grew to a tall tree. Can I ask you a few questions? Yes. Could you tell me a little bit about yourself, Obnaxus? Me? About myself? We, the Venar, are not good at speaking of ourselves. We always know who we are, and so we have no need to tell each other. Well, are you married? Do you have kids? Or perhaps your people don't marry? Yes, we do marry, and we always know who we are to be with, because our future is also our past, and so we also know our children even though, according to your reckoning, they have yet to be born. My wife was, is, will be, the beautiful Abyanda. She lives by the Bay of Fire in the east. She gave birth to our three female children, Abratha, Abalexa, Abpalmana. How long has it been since you last saw them? I see them now, April Ryan. Do not forget I perceive time in a different manner from your kind. I have given them your regards. Well, uh, say hi to them for me. Why did you come here to Mercuria? I was chosen to be ambassador to Ired when I showed a talent for seeing the flow of time from one point to the next. I was trained for a long time in locking myself into a single moment to communicate and understand your world. My people do not normally involve themselves with others, but the veil has forced us to do so. Why don't the Venar want to involve themselves with humans? In the wrong hands, our knowledge is dangerous. To know of the possible fluctuating futures this can be a weapon to some who flow with time. We cannot interfere with your time. We are not allowed. Who says? The balance. The guardian. The guardian watches not only the balance between worlds, but also the balance within. Time is in balance. And if this balance is upset, the guardian would know. I thought the Guardian was gone. So he is, and that makes it even more crucial to my people that we preserve the balance and not upset it. Chaos is our enemy, April Ryan, and we do our part to keep it at bay, as do you. Are you planning on ever going back to your people? When we pass through the veil to the other side and time yet again opens up, I will return to my people. I look forward to that day. I miss my people, and it is hard to speak with your kind. It makes me tired. I know what you mean. I'm a stranger here, too. You will bring us through the veil, April Ryan, and then we can both leave this place and go home. Where is your home, Abnaxus? Across the border mountains and north, to where the forests are evergreen, and where in winter the land turns white. Do you know Father Tobias? Tobias is a faithful servant of the balance, and he is a good man. He leads the sentinel down a narrow path, but he never wavers. We are friends. So, I can trust him? Trust is a concept which often puzzles me. Amongst my people there is never distrust. We always know the truth. But amongst your people, amongst those who flow with time, trust is important, a fragile thing. But yes, yes, I do think Tobias is to be trusted fully. I cannot see beyond the veil, but up to that point there is no thread in which he betrays your trust, April Ryan. Have you heard of a man named Cortez? No, I have not. 
but that does not mean I do not know him. Names are often fleeting, April Ryan. He's my... well, some have called him my mentor, others a nutcase. I'm not sure which it is, but I'm leaning towards the former. Your mentor? He is a shifter as well? No, I don't think so. He doesn't travel. Shift between Stark and Arcadia. I do not see him in my life, April Ryan. I do not know him. Beyond the veil, perhaps, but not before. Thanks, Abnaxus. You are always welcome, April Ryan. I need some help in my quest. Yes, you did. I did? And what did you answer? That I will help you as much as I can, but in the end... I'm on my own. I've heard that one before. How would I go about fighting chaos? You cannot fight chaos. It is not so simple. To oppose chaos, one must return order to that which has been affected by chaos, and thus reduce its powers. But this is not something everyone can do. Only those ordained by the balance can embark on such a dangerous task and survive. What do you know about dragons? I do not know much about the kin, but I do know a little. Perhaps it will help you, perhaps not. The Dryak kin came to this world a very, very long time ago. Before the dawn of man, before the divide, the Venar had yet to learn to be outside time, and there were few other peoples on earth. The kin played an important part in the divide, in separating magic from science, and in the founding of the fathers, the sentinel, to watch over the balance. It is said that after the divide of the four dry kin that came to Earth, two went to Stark and two to Arcadia. But that was a long time ago, twelve thousand of your years. I do not know what has become of them since. You don't know where I may find these dry kin? No, the white of the dry kin, the mother, has, according to legend, been sighted. The tale of the silver spear of Gorimon speaks of the mother and her child. Though I think this is but a tale, and far from the truth. The story is called The Silver Spear of Gorimon? Yes, unfortunately I do not have this book myself, and I do not know of anyone who does. What about the other dragon, the other dry kin? Of the dry kin, I only know of the mother, the white of the kin, although I have heard tell of a god who fell from the sky into the ocean a great long time ago, but this may also be just a tale. What else do you know about this god who fell from the sky? Only what I have told you. Someone with greater knowledge of the ocean and the creatures that live beneath its surface may be able to tell you more. Do you know anything about a rift leading to the Guardian's realm? I have heard speak of such a thing. I believe it was where the tower was built and the divide created. When the earth was one, it might still be open. Any idea where it is? I am afraid the Venar were never very involved in the affairs of the Sentinel, nor took any part in the Divide except to agree to the necessity of it. We had little choice but to concede. We are a magical people. We need the balance, because we would not, could not, survive without magic. Have you heard of a disc that works as a key to the Guardian's realm? Yes, but very little. It has been spoken of in the I Read Council only recently, brought to attention by the Tyran Ambassador. He wished to know where it is kept. 
And what was the answer? No one at the council knows or admitted to knowing, and the ambassador was asked to speak with the sentinel, which he is unlikely to concede to. The Tyran are allied with the vanguard, and so are in political and ideological opposition with the sentinel. I know Vestrum Tobias. He would not speak a word with the Tyran, nor the vanguard. Not unless it was to challenge their philosophies. So you don't know where I can find the disc? No. Ask Vestrum Tobias. That's about it for now. I am glad I could be of assistance, April Ryan. Thanks for your hospitality, Obnaxus. Goodbye. Blessings of the balance to you, April Ryan. And may your journey have been a long and fruitful one. Good morning, Tobias. Why, it's April, my friend from Stark. Have you come to visit us again? So it appears. I didn't exactly come here by choice this time, though. Oh? How so, if I may ask? In a weird and twisted way, it's nothing out of what's become the substitute for ordinary in my life. One second I was in my room in Newport, the next, I was in a dark alley in Mercuria. You must have opened a shift while you were sleeping. Good. This means you are learning to harness your magic. Yeah, I guess, except I don't think I'll be able to get back home again. And this time, my mentor, Cortez, has no idea that I'm here. Ah, but I'm sure you will find a way to channel and control your power soon. In the meantime, is there anything I can do to help? I need to locate the two dragons that reside in Arcadia. The dry kin? What's the difference? Dragons is a word from your world. The kin are not what they have become in your legends and fairy tales. But they're real, aren't they? Oh, as real as you and me, April. And old. They have been here since before our time. As you probably remember, the kin were instrumental in the Divide, saving mankind from a terrible end. But I know so little, only what I can remember from my studies when I was a minstrel at the Enclave. How can I get more information on the dry kin? Books, daughter, books. The wisdom of the ages. There is one tome you should study, called The Secrets of the Dry Kin by Minstrom Elniak. It is old but informative, and it captures the imagination. Where can I find this book? Pay a visit to the Sentinel Enclave, located outside the city to the east. The Great Library of the Enclave contains every book ever written by an Arcadian Minstrom, and most others as well. Speak with Minstrom Yerin, the Keeper of Books. Tell him I sent you. I need to find the entrance to the Guardian's realm. There is one. You are right in that, but where I would not venture to guess. In the past, when the time came for the Guardian to step down and another to take his or her place, the Guardian opened a gateway wherever it was needed. A Guardian, still in full control of the balance, can invite anyone in and let anyone out. But with the Guardian gone, the only way in would be the point where the Divide was first created, where the tower was built. Isn't that location written down somewhere? Remember that this was done on the old Earth before the Divide. After the Divide, after the creation of Stark and Arcadia, places were shifted about. This entrance may not even be on the ground anymore. What do you mean? 
It could be up there, in the sky, or far below us, through the crust of the earth into the molten depths below. I cannot say, and I do not know anyone who could. Isn't there any way to locate the entrance to the Guardian's realm? Perhaps with careful investigation of the old texts, histories of Arcadia, of the Divide, the scriptures. I do not know, April, but it cannot hurt to look. Again, you will find these texts at the Sentinel Enclave. Speak with Minstrom Yerin. I need to locate the disk that unlocks the Guardian's Tower. The disk that is the key? Yes, it is needed. It might even restore balance, provided the new Guardian accompanies it to the Tower, of course. But you wish to find the disk yourself? I have to. Cliché or not, it's our only hope. You uh, do this often, then? You know, save worlds? It's an expression. Heroism in my world is more of a cliché than anything else. I do not understand. But then, I am merely a servant of the balance, while you are... more. But yes, the disk. As I told you once before, when the Earth was divided, and the realm of the Guardian created, a disk was forged in the Well of Making. The disk was to serve two purposes, as a key to the Tower of Balance should it become necessary to enter it in the Guardian's absence, and as a replacement for the disk that is already in the Tower should it be broken. The Tower is now abandoned and locked, and the old disk shattered. I do think the time is right for the second disk to be brought forward and used. Where is the disk now? At first, more than 12,000 years ago, it was kept in the open, at the Sentinel Enclave outside Mercuria. However, when thieves attempted to make away with a disk, it was taken away. Why? So that the four parts of the disk could be divided amongst four of the magical people of Arcadia, people who would have nothing to gain from the balance being compromised. What people were the disk divided amongst? This I cannot tell you. I am not sure anyone remembers now. But it would be in the scriptures, I am certain. What scriptures? The scriptures of the balance. There are thirteen of them. Thirteen is a strong number, rich in tradition and... Did you know the Irede High Council consists of thirteen ministers? No, of course you don't. Thirteen was also the number of the fathers who begat the Sentinel, and who built the Tower of Balance. Where can I find the scriptures of the Balance? Again, you will find these texts at the Sentinel Enclave. Speak with Minstrom Yerin. I need help getting back home. Unfortunately, I'm in no better state today to help you shift than I was the day before yesterday. You are the one with the talent. And so you must learn to use that talent. Thank you, Tobias. Good to know I could help you, April. annotated history of the Northlands, have you? I, I could have sworn it was here yesterday. Sorry, no. I guess someone else must have taken it. <clears throat> I try to tell them to write down what they borrow on the list, but they never listen. Only last week I spent three hours searching the entire enclave for the second scripture of the balance, the scripture of song, before I realized that Vestrum Tobias was studying it back in the city. Now, such incidents could be avoided if only, and uh, this applies to you too, young lady, people would sign out the books they borrow when they borrow them and sign them back in when they're done. 
such a simple procedure. It shouldn't take more than a few seconds to jot down your name and the name of the book you borrow. It makes my job so much easier. Uh, now, which book did you want me to find for you? Are you Minster Mjaren? Yes, of course. What a silly question. How would I know? I don't know you. I am Minstrom Yerin, keeper of the great library of Mercuria. In fact, this is the greatest library of all the Northlands. Perhaps of the entire world. Although they say the Dark People have a library as big, if not bigger, than this one. But of course, we're not allowed anywhere near there. Have you been there? I don't think... What a silly question. Of course you haven't. You're not of the dark people, are you? You don't look like any dark people I've ever seen, so I can't see how you could possibly... Now, where did Volume 6 disappear to? Hmm? Tobias said I should talk with you. Tobias? Uh, Vestrum Tobias? I haven't seen him for... Well, he was in last week, but before that it must have been uh, days at least. How is he? Is still eating enough for two mules? I must tell you of this funny story I heard the other day, of how Vestrum Tobias eats enough for a table full of Minstrum. Uh, or was it one Elguan? Although the Elguan don't, as a rule, eat very much at all. Did you know that the Elguan can smell water more than half a day's journey away? Amazing, amazing creatures, perfectly suited for a life in the desert. The balance provides, uh, that's for certain. The balance provides. Vestrum Tobias recommended that I look at some books. Uh, books is what we do best here at the Enclave, that is for certain. Which book would you like to see? I'm looking for some information, but I'm not sure which book to ask for. No matter. I know a great deal about most of the books in here. What topic intrigues you? I'd like to learn more about dragons, about the drag kin. Oh, yes, yes. We have some wonderful books on that topic. Stay here. I did find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you to read. Are you done? Let me take that back for you. Oh! Oh, goodness, it's you again. Oh, you gave me such a fright. Could I see some more books? Oh, certainly. What a silly question. I need to find out which four magical people of Arcadia were given a piece of the stone disc that serves as the key to the Guardian's realm. The stone disc of the balance, yes? 
Yes, yes, there, there could possibly be something on that in... Uh, um, uh, let me check. Just one moment. to read some Arcadian folk tales. A favorite topic of mine. I have just what you're looking for. A book on the history of Mercuria would be interesting. Ah, an extensive subject, to be sure. I will do my best. Thank you. 
for a story called The Silver Spear of Goriman. Yes, a fanciful tale if I ever saw one, but a charming one. Did you know that I'm often paid visit by adventurers wishing to read everything available on the spear so that they too could set out on their foolish quests? Yeah, don't you just hate those adventurers? Well, they pay for my bread, milk, and butter with their contributions to the coffers, so I shouldn't be too critical of them. Uh, but they care not about the books. They care only about what the books can give them. I care. About the books, really. I can tell. So, the Silver Spear of Gurimon, then? Yes, yes, good, good. Hello. Uh -huh. Do you know anything about a god that fell from the sky into the sea? Of course. You find fallen gods most everywhere these days. They're an air and a hand. Really? No, of course not. There are no fallen gods in the sea. It wouldn't make much sense, would it? If the sea was full of gods just lying about the seabed. So you've never heard of such a thing happening? Now you got it. Why aren't you out at sea? Do you see the sail on that barge over there? Yes. Is it flapping? What? Is it flapping? Is the sail flapping in the wind? Um, no. And why is that then? Because... because it's not windy? Exactly. Well, can't you just use oars or something? Oh, what an excellent idea. Now, why didn't we think of that? Of course, oars. By Jaws' stunted left arm, that's it. Why have we been moored to the dock for a month with our merchandise dropping in value when we could have just rowed our way to Guillen? Are you being sarcastic? Sarcastic? Me? What in Jaws' name makes you think that? How long's it been since the last wind? Near a month. Ever since that accursed alchemist put some kind of spell on the wind. The Mojal be cursed if I know why. But it's a bloody catastrophe. I've sent some good people of mine up north to deal with him. But not one has returned. Now the A-Reed High Council speak of sending an entire army platoon to sort him out. But I'm afraid that just might piss him off. Who's this alchemist who cast a spell on the wind? I believe his name is Clax. Roper Clax. Lives in a bloody rock somewhere up north, beyond Riverwood. Bye.
Hello, old man. I got me no treasure, and I got me no map of no buried treasure. I just be an old sailor with no ship, so leave us be. What have you got in that chest? What chest? The one you're sitting on. Oh, that be no chest, girl. That be me stool. I me stool, carved into the uncanny likeness of a chest. But what's in it? No priceless treasure. That be for sure. Nothing, nothing at all. It be empty. No, really. What's in the chest? Oh, live snakes! Ay, snakes that'll bite your face off before you have time to jump. Better leave them be then. I'm still curious about that chest. Right, right. I be telling you, curse the balance, girl. You never give up, do you? I be having no real treasure in here, like I told ye. Be where I keep me personal articles and things I be picking up now and then on me travels. And me bed, it's where I be keeping me bed before I be losing him. I be a stupid, stupid old man. He be my best friend. I ain't nobody else around to talk to, you see, on account of him being a talking bird. What happened to your talking bird? I be it cheated out of him. I. That cups handler on the marketplace be cheating me in a fool game of cups, and I be having to give me bird up to try to win me money back. And what happened? He be taking me bird when I be choosing the wrong cup. I my best friend taken from me. Cursed to be the balance. I be all lonesome now. The worst part is that me bird is now a prize to be won, a prize in the cups game. Beat the handler thrice, and you win a prize of your choice, me poor bird. What's your bird's name? Bird. Oh, what are you doing? Mending nets, of course. What it look like I be doing? I'm not well versed in maritime customs. Mar what? Ah, yes, mean sea life, dear nut. Ah, the smell of the salty sea. The lapping of waves on your ship, the spray of cold water on your face, plump maidens in every part. I, I tell you, I be having stories about the sea. Care to share some of your maritime stories with me? Mar what? Ah, tales of the sea, right? Sure, sweetie, I be happy to. Now, what stories be I wanted to hear then? Any tale of your exciting adventures will do. I, I be having plenty of tales to tell. There be the tale of me adventures in the Bakshivan Empire. If he'd be interested, it'd be a tale of grand romance. Just up your alley, be sure of it. Sure, that sounds like a fine story. I, it be near on fifty years ago that I was a mate on a sturdy old lady. Called the three-legged whore. The what? What do I be saying? She was called the thrifty horse. She was. Aye, that be her name. The whistle what's it? Ah,、uh, you don't remember the ship's name, do you? Ah.、Uh, anyways, I be a young mate then, and we be anchored in Montherva. The grand western port of the once glorious Bakshivan Empire. I be having ship leave until the following evening, and it be me first visit to that exotic and dangerous port. So I sets out to have a look around. Now, bear in mind that Montherba be ruled by a mock, like all large Bakshivan cities. In principle. The mock be having to report to and pay half of all taxes to the emperor in Port Altaban, but with the Bakshivan Empire having all but crumbled into pieces, the provinces do be having the power to do pretty much as they be wanting. Ah, and so I sets out on me own that day to explore the city. Now, 
Bear in mind that all the cities of the Southlands... And that be me adventures in the once glorious empire of Bakshiva. And that be how I meet me bird bird. How I see Dus and the romance the mock's daughter. How I be chased from Mount Herba by the mock's soldiers. And how I be the first man to walk across the desert of Shangagriel, the wastelands. And how I be getting this awful rash on. Ah, girl, you do not be sleeping, do you? What? 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 Sleeping? N no, 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 just concentrating really hard. Arr. Good story, though. Solid, solid material. Ever considered doing a book? Aye, but the agents in Marcuria be bloodthirsty vampires with no thought but to milk your life's blood. Oh, so they take an outrageous commission then? No, they actually be bloodthirsty vampires with a penchant for biting your neck when you ain't be looking. Huh. Have you heard a story about a god who fell from the sky into the sea? Aye, that I be having. Although that be a story of man-eating mermen who ravaged the sea of songs, swallowing sailors whole and spitting their bones out to dry. Are you sure you be up for hearing such a cruel tale? I've heard worse. Uh, ye be a tough little lady, be you not? All right. Well... Like I be telling you, the sea of song surrounding the island kingdom of Gien be a treacherous sea where countless vessels have disappeared without a trace. Now, this be near thirty long winters ago, mind, during me second term as captain of the trader, Lucky Lady. We've been crossing the sea of songs for two seasons. And we've yet to be seeing any sign of the dreaded bloodthirsty mermen who lurk in the waters off the Guyen coast. That night we be laying still with our sails down, awaiting the wind to pick up and carry us north to Mercuria, when we be hearing a frightful scream coming from the port side of the Lady Luck. I be the first to rush over and account of me having me arm down the apple barrel. We just been to Eras to pick up one hundred barrels of sweet Guyan apples. And as luck would have it, I be there just in time to witness Sally Barney's horrible fate. He be in the water, screaming and waving his arms, and the water around him be red as a midwife's arms after a grueling bath. I get the picture. Go on. Then I be seeing, I glimpse a large, shiny, sleek body be pulling Sally down and swallow him whole. It be the merman come to claim the body of the sailor who dare across their sea. Are you sure it wasn't a shark? What? Big fish with sharp teeth and dead black eyes and a large triangular fin on top? You mean a black-eyed snapjaw? I guess it could have been, but it be no snapjaw. It be the dreaded merman of the Sea of Songs. Where does the sea god fit into all of this? I, I be coming to that. You see, the bloodthirsty merman be not only happy with cannibalizing sailors, but they be sacrificing their own to their dark old sea god. Actually, unless the mermen are human, they wouldn't really be cannibals if they ate humans. Blood sacrifices to their dreaded god who lives on the bottom of the sea. Aye, that be the truth of the mermen, fierce and bloodthirsty cannibals of the Sea of Songs. Uh, thanks. Good story. Aye. I'd better get going. Ah, you young'uns all be always running round. Everything be so important, 
He's been having no time to sit down and take a breath. So go. Be not wasting your time here with me. Hi there, Mr. Westhouse. I'm back. My word. <laughs> what on earth possessed you to return to this godforsaken place? You were lucky to escape the first time, but now you're really pushing it. It's not that bad a place, or else you wouldn't stay here. Besides, this time I didn't exactly come here by choice. I stay here because I'm a true masochist, Miss Ryan. And who forced you to come? Was it Cortez? He doesn't even know I'm here, unfortunately. No, I think I had some kind of accident with my so-called powers. I shifted in my underwear. No, huh? <laughs> it isn't that the way it is, though. We always cross the rift at the most inopportune times. <laughs> Care for a drink? Oh, no, no, that's right. You, uh, don't. <laughs> Would you mind helping me with a few questions? I have nothing better to do, so shoot. Do you know anything about dragons? I try to stay out of the affairs of the kin these days. What precisely do you wish to know about the damn beasts? There are two dragons in Arcadia, and I'm trying to locate them. Yeah, I've heard that tale myself, but no, no, I don't know anything about it. You'd be better off speaking with the Sentinel Minstrum. After all, religion is their specialty, not mine. Would you be able to tell me where I could look for the entrance to the Guardian's realm? In Tobias's pants? <laughs> if he had his wish, I'm sure. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know anything about the Guardians. Balance, or Sentinel, or gardening. <laughs> now, if you're interested in bullfighting, I could talk all night. Bullfighting's a horrible act of cruelty to animals, and not much of a sport at all. I'll just forget you said that, Miss Ryan. If there's one thing I miss about Stark, it's bullfighting. You'll be happy to hear, then, that they abolished bullfighting hundreds of years ago. Damn. I'm looking for a disc that will open up the Guardian's realm. That's religion, Miss Ryan. And the only things I worship are whiskey, a good cigar, and a nice long... <clears throat> anyway, don't ask me about all that uh, balance mumbo-jumbo. Did you ever hear a story about a god who fell from the sky? Stories aren't my thing, April. You should visit a library. I'm sure you'll find some stories in the books. I know the Sentinel have a library somewhere near the city. I've also heard rumor of a people with wings who do nothing but observe and record history through stories. But I don't know if that's all it is. A rumor. Still, if you're looking for stories, it may be wise to check it out and see if you can find them. What did you say about the flying people? They're supposed to be great storytellers, and they've been observing this world for a very long time. But it could only be a rumor. Thanks, Mr. Westhouse. Anytime, April. Come back if you're homesick and you feel like talking to a fellow alien. <laughs> <laughs>